Welcome to question 10 of the 2015 Mathematical Methods Exam 1. In this video we will be looking at the solutions and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 10 we have a diagram shown with a point T on a circle. The circle has a radius of 2 and a centre at the point C with coordinates 2, 0. The angle ECT is given by theta where theta is between 0 and pi on 2. The diagram also shows the tangent at the circle T, and that tangent is perpendicular to CT and intersects the x-axis at the point X and the y-axis at the point Y, all as shown in the diagram. And for part A, we're asked to find the coordinates of T in terms of theta. So to find the coordinates of T in terms of theta, we need to isolate a right-angled triangle that we could draw just here that has theta as the angle and a hypotenuse length of 2 which is equivalent to the radius of that circle. We also need to remember that there's this distance of 2 that goes from here to the centre of the circle which will be important when we're calculating the coordinates of t. So drawing that right angled triangle out again just below, this length was 2, this I'm going to just let be x at the moment and this is going to be y and they're going to help us find the coordinates of the point t which is up here and we need to remember that there is a length of 2 that we need to add on to x when we're finding those coordinates. So now that we have a right angled triangle we remember that so Cartoa can be used to relate angles and lengths where the angle theta is here and that's the important one for us. So first of all, we know that cosine of theta is related to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So therefore, for the right angle triangle that we have, we know that cos of theta is going to equal the adjacent length, which we've coined x, over the hypotenuse's length of 2. So therefore, x can be written as 2 times cos of theta. However, that's not the x coordinate of t. We still need to add 2 onto that. So the coordinate t, if we start to build it up here, is going to be 2 plus 2 cos of the angle theta. The y value then we can find using the sine ratio. So we know sine of theta is equal to the opposite on the hypotenuse. So therefore, sine of theta is going to equal the opposite, which is the y value, over the hypotenuse of 2. So therefore, y can be written as 2 sine of theta. So that is the y value of the coordinate for t. So that is 2 sine of theta. And that is the answer to part A of this question. From the examiner's report, we can see that 20% of students got the mark for this question and that the most common error was the oversight of the plus 2 that was necessary for the x coordinate. For part B, we're asked to find the gradient of the tangent to the circle at t in terms of theta. And then thinking back to the right angled triangle we were dealing with before can help us work out the gradient of the tangent to the circle at the point t. So that right angled triangle, if I draw it out below, had a rise y of 2 sine theta and it had a run of 2 cos of theta. And that would be between the point c and t. So therefore, the gradient of CT, the center of the circle to the tangent T, is going to equal the rise over run, which is 2 sine of theta divided by 2 cos of theta. And we know that that is just going to turn into sine over cos, which is tan of theta. However, we weren't asked for the gradient of that line, but we can use knowledge of perpendicular lines to calculate the gradient of the line XY. So therefore, the gradient of xy, which is the tangent line, is going to equal negative 1 divided by the gradient of ct, which is tan theta. So that is the answer to part b of this question. And now just to elaborate on that slightly further, we knew that if two lines are perpendicular, then the gradient of one line times the gradient of the second line should equal negative 1. Therefore, the gradient of a second line is equal to negative 1 divided by the gradient of the first line, which is what we've done in that box up above. 
So from the examiner's report, we can see that 16% of students got the mark for that question and that equivalent expressions such as m of the line segment x, y is equal to negative cos on sine of theta were also accepted. Some students included the variables of b or d in their final answer, which wasn't asked for, it needed to be in terms of theta. And the report goes on to say that many students found the gradient of the radius ct, but then didn't go on to find the gradient of the line segment xt, which is what was required for this question. For part c it says the equation of the tangent to the circle at t can be expressed as cos of theta x plus sine of theta y equals 2 plus 2 cos of theta. For part 1 of part c it says the point b with coordinates 2b is on the line segment xy and it asks us to find b in terms of theta. So we just have that this is a particular x value and y value that would satisfy this equation. So we're simply going to substitute them into the equation of the tangent line. So subbing 2 in for x would give 2 cos of theta. And subbing b in for y would just give plus b sine of theta. And that would equal 2 plus 2 cos of theta. Therefore, we would have b sine of theta is simply equal to 2 when we subtract 2 cos of theta from both sides of that equation. So therefore, b in terms of theta is simply equal to 2 divided by sine theta. So that is the answer to part 1 of part c. And the examiner's report says that many students who had no success with parts a and b still managed to attain full marks for this question. The most efficient method was to substitute the relevant points into the given equation and then transpose for the variable specified. And for part 1 of part C, 54% of students got that answer correct. For part 2 of part C, we now have the point D with coordinates 4D is on the line segment XY, and we want to find D in terms of theta. So again, this is simply an X value, and this is simply a Y value we can substitute in. So that means when we substitute them in, we'll get 4 times cos of theta plus D sine of theta, is equal to 2 plus 2 cos of theta. Then we're going to subtract 4 cos of theta from both sides, so we'd have d sine of theta is equal to 2 plus 2 cos of theta, then we minus 4 cos of theta from that, would just give 2 minus 2 cos of theta. So therefore, d in terms of theta is simply going to be 2 minus 2 cos of theta divided by sine of theta. So that is the answer for part two of part C. And the same comment applied, and we can see that 47% of students got that part of part C correct. For part D, it says, consider the trapezium CEDB with parallel sides of length B and D. So that is this trapezium in here, where this side length is parallel to this side length. And for this question, we're asked to find the value of theta for which the area of the trapezium is a minimum, and also find the minimum value of the area. So the first thing we actually need to do is find an expression for the area of that trapezium in terms of theta. And from our formula sheet, we know the area of a trapezium is equal to a half times a plus b times the height h. So for this diagram, this could be the side length a, so to speak, this could be b, and this length in here would be considered h for our diagram. So therefore, the area in terms of theta is going to equal, and we would have a half multiplied by a plus b, or in this case, it's the length of height b and height d. But from before, we knew the height b was simply 2 divided by sine of theta. And then we add on to that the height of d, which was found to be 2 minus 2 cos of theta on sine of theta. And then we would need to multiply that by the height h, which is 2. So that's the distance between the point c and the point e. So we can see that the divide by 2 at the front and the multiply by 2 at the end would cancel. And that would give us an area in terms of theta that's simply equal to 2 plus 2 is 4 minus 2 cos of theta divided by sine of theta. So we can add those fractions as they have a common denominator. Next, if we're trying to find a minimum value, that would usually mean finding the derivative, so d a d theta, and setting it equal to zero. 
and solving the equation for a stationary point. So if our area formula in terms of theta is equal to 4 minus 2 cos of theta divided by sine of theta, we're going to need the product rule to differentiate that. So to apply the product rule, I'm going to start by letting u be the function on the numerator, which is going to be 4 minus 2 cos of theta. And v is going to be the function in the denominator, which is sine of theta. Then we need to calculate du dx. And du dx, the 4 differentiates to 0. And minus 2 cos of theta is going to differentiate to minus 2 times negative sine of theta, which gives positive 2 sine of theta. And v dx, the last thing we need to calculate here, is going to equal simply cos of theta. And now to calculate that derivative, we're going to find d dx of a function u divided by v is equal to v times du dx minus u times dv dx divided by v squared. And that's on your formula sheet for you to refer to. So applying that rule, we find da d theta, the derivative that we're after, is going to equal v times du dx, which is going to be sine theta times two sine theta, which gives two sine squared of theta. And then we're going to subtract away from that, and we're going to have u times dv dx, which is going to be four take two cos of theta times cos of theta. And when you multiply that out, you get four cos of theta, and then there'd be subtract two cos squared of theta. And then all of that is going to be divided by v squared, which is sine of theta squared. Simplifying that down, we get da d theta is going to equal, and we would have two bracket, and we're going to write this as sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta. And then there'd still be minus four cos of theta on the top line. And that's still divided by sine squared of theta. And now the reason why we've written that like this is because we know that sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta is simply equal to one. And that's the Pythagorean identity. So therefore, if what we wanna do is solve da d theta is equal to zero, what we're actually solving is the top line of this fraction equal to zero, which is simply two minus four cos of theta must equal zero. So if two subtract four cos of theta must equal zero, then we can rearrange that to say that cos of theta must equal a half. And now with our knowledge of exact values, we know that theta must equal pi on three. And the reason why that's the only solution it can be is earlier in the question, and it's not written on this slide, but it said theta is between zero and pi on two. So the only value for theta between zero and pi on two that gives cos of theta is a half is theta equals pi on three. So that's one part of the answer to this question. Next, we need to work out the area of that minimum, which is gonna be when we sub pi on three into our area equation. And that area equation is the one that we developed back here. So we're going to end up with four subtract two times cos of pi on three divided by sine of pi on three. And now we know cos of pi on three is a half and that sine of pi on three is root three on two. So the area for when x is pi on three is equal to four subtract two times a half is four subtract one is three. And then we're going to divide by root three on two, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of two over root three. So therefore the area when x is pi on three, which is the minimum area, is going to equal six over root three, which can actually be written as two root three. So that is the second part of the answer we needed to provide for this question. And now from the examiner's report, we can see that students found this question challenging with only 11% of students getting full marks for the question and 68% of students getting zero marks. The first step required an expression for the area of the trapezium in terms of only theta. Calculus then needed to be used to determine the value of theta for which it was a minimum area. And then finally to find this minimum area by substituting that value back into the expression they'd found earlier. 
Many students did not attempt this question at all or had difficulty in deriving the area function, which stopped them from progressing far with this question.